To give our sustainability keynote, please welcome Lars Svensson, Sustainability and Communication Director for IKEA Southeast Asia. Lars will expound on the Scandinavian furniture and home accessory makers' integrated sustainable initiatives and zero carbon efforts around the world. Well, good morning. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. My name is Lars Svensson. Uh, I'm the head of sustainability for IKEA South Asia and Mexico. We're right now here at Mega City in Bangkok, Thailand, where we both have the Mega Bangna Shopping Center and the IKEA shop in Thailand. Well, just like uh, you guys working with real estate, IKEA works with people's home and life at home. I think we have a lot of things in common there. And for us, our core vision is to create a better everyday life at the homes of the many people. And we do that through our home furnishing business by providing affordable home furnishing solutions that people can have to improve their life at home. But beyond that, a better everyday life also means the environment. It also means the biodiversity. It also means the various aspects about social inequalities in society. So we have a large responsibility here that we believe as a business just like the real estate business, have a huge possibility of impacting the current and most pressing needs that we have from a sustainability point of view in the world. We have identified three main areas where we think is something that is a real risk for our business long-term wise and where we know through our business we can make a business. One is the fact that we've agreed on that there is unsustainable consumption in the world today. If everyone were to consume as much as we do in the developed world or people in the upper or middle income groups, if everyone in the world would consume as much as we do, we wouldn't have enough resources on the planet already today. So our unsustainable consumption is one. The second one is the current situation when it comes to the climate. We know and we've seen the reports uh, whereby we're heading in a dangerous direction when it comes to the climate. So we know that through our business, we also have a huge impact on the climate. So we have an ambition there to address the climate situation currently. Then we also have growing social inequalities. And just now with the impact of COVID and the Corona pandemic, we can see over hundred million people in the world will for the first time in over 20 to 30 years will move down into poverty from where they were. So these aspects around growing social inequalities, uh, climate impact, and our sustainable consumption are three areas we've chosen that we know from a business point of view can address. And we've done that by defining our sustainability approach in three areas. One is we want to enable people to live a more and healthier, sustainable life at home. Two, we are going towards becoming climate positive and circular by 2030. And three, we have a social and equal agenda where we can impact on our supply chain, on co-workers, and in general part of the society also make a difference there on reducing the inequalities that we currently have. So these are the three focus areas we're working with. And the one most important point that we're talking about is the fact that all these initiatives, all these focus areas will always be anchored in our business, in our value chain. So the things that we do, we're trying to do it through the way we conduct our business. And we truly believe that sustainability is a business enabler more than anything. It's a source of growth. Sustainability is an engine for relevance. Sustainability is an engine for becoming more profit profitable and more efficient. And sustainability is an engine for doing the right thing and becoming a good company over time. So that's where we are. And that's how you should see all the initiatives that I'll talk about right now on what we're doing to make a difference currently. So we can start here with this huge footprints that we create with meeting places and shopping centers, or even the blue boxes. Uh, we know that one of the largest part of the greenhouse gases impact that we have is how people travel to and from these locations. So IKEA throughout its whole total value chain is actually responsible for 0.1% of the global greenhouse gases. And we know when our whole value chain, the large, largest part of the impact in greenhouse gases come from the manufacturing and the raw material. 
but 17% of that total value chain comes from the customers traveling to and from our locations, our shops, our shopping centers. So one example that we've done here that is entirely in line with also securing that is business positive is we actually built not so far away from here at Bang Natural Expressway, we built a U-turn. That U-turn is financed by us. It's working collaborations with Thai authorities. But what it will do, that will cut the traveling time uh, of up to 30 minutes of all our visitors by not having to go through the longer time or making a U-turn to come back home or come into the shopping center. We are adding additional car parks um, here on this side to increase the accessibility and also to wait uh, to reduce the waiting time for cars driving in and out of the shopping center. Because you know, when people are driving around in the cars, going back and forward, it has an impact also on the uh, greenhouse gas and the footprint. So that's just one example. So another good example, so where we have an impact when it comes to becoming and moving towards becoming climate positive is on top of the second store here in Thailand, Ikea Bang Yai, on that rooftop, we have uh, installed 1.3 megawatt peak worth of solar panels. And that actually generates renewable energy that helps power the store. So a total of about 30% of the power that the store needs comes from the solar panels that also doubles up as uh, uh, sun cover for the car park on the rooftop. Here at Mega Bangna on the top, we have also corresponded to one megawatt peak of solar panels generating power that we sell back to the grid. And on the Kia store here in Bangna, we have slightly less, but we're expanding on those solar panels and we hope eventually to reach a larger share of renewable energy power that we generate ourselves that are then consumed by the store. Then we'll also look at contracts, what we can buy from existing power structures and, and power sources to secure them that we can go towards 100% renewable energy. Another interesting fact is that we also are championing new technology. So in uh, one of the stores in Singapore, we became the first commercial unit that works with the sun to cool the store. So we're working there with a solar, a solar solution, a subject called solar cooling even, that drives the, in short, that actually drives the air conditioning in the store. Both saving on the environment and actually saving money in the long run for the store. And what I'd like to say and add in all these aspects about becoming then uh, climate positive with time, we are always having the ambition to ensure that is also at the same time are improving our bottom line and saving money, increases efficiencies. So it's not so much that we talk about sustainability it requires a lot of investment that are going to cost a lot of money. Sustainability actually helps you save resources, cut the cost and enables you to become more profitable. And that's the principle we apply also when it comes to pricing our products and the solutions we're offering the customers. Sustainability should not be a luxury. Sustainability should be affordable for the many people and it's a right. And that direction is where we're heading over time. Today, we may say that sustainability could be a competitive advantage, but to far and more and more, you can see that surrounding you, sustainability is becoming a hygiene factor. So one of the key points is ensuring then that you're able to embed sustainability in your everyday decisions, distribute the decision power for sustainability into your organization to the respective function. The guys that works with facility management or the guys that works with the sales or the guys that works with the marketing, they are also the ones that are best fitted to understand and to make the right decisions for sustainability in their respective function. So by distributing the organization, distributing the power sustainability and making it part, an integrated part of how you conduct the business, you become more effective and you become more profitable. Uh, I'm more than happy to have conversations beyond this seminar if you want to visit us or talk to us about ideas and what you can do. One other dimension that is important is that there is a, a buy-in, of course, from the organization, from the owners and from the management, but it's also to have goals, common goals that the total organization drives towards. And I think uh, an easy one that more and more companies are signing up to is to subscribe to the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. There you have a timeline, there you have the goals broken down, now you can find them relevant to your respective business. So that's why we also say that we want to become, for example, a circular business and a climate positive business by 2030.
for that very reason. So a question here on what we can do in the real estate side um, when it comes to sustainability measures so that we could have in common. Yeah, I think IKEA and, and our shopping center business is very much a real estate business too. And the way we build and construct our buildings already sets the agenda for how efficient, how sustainable you can become. So for example, building according to LEED standards or green certification standards already there can help you driving and building stores, real estates that is more efficient and are reducing the climate footprint at the same time. An important part with these measures is also you make the operation later on and the life cycle cost reduced. So whoever unit, whatever management unit, whatever tenant is that takes over the property after you built it, they are able to run a more efficient home uh, with reduced cooling cost or heating cost, depending on where you are geographically, um, or from uh, the management side of running, whether it's the swimming pools, whether it's uh, the greener around there. All these actually contributes to actually reduce cost over time. At the same time, help you drive towards becoming climate positive or climate neutral, whatever your goals are. So as you recall, we talked that one of the areas that is a big concern is unsustainable consumption. And as we are a consumer company, but we have the whole value chain to take into account. One dimension that is very important and therefore one of our focus areas is to enable people to live a more sustainable and healthy life at home. And that doesn't only go for our customers, that goes also for our co-workers, for our suppliers, and for the community at large. And we do that partially by securing that we integrate sustainability as one of five design elements in all the products that we have. So one aspect could be that you can be safe and ensure that the sourcing of the product has been done in a responsible manner without a severe environmental impact or without uh, taking advantage of children or labor uh, or breaking any of the laws uh, when it comes to environmental protection, etc. So that's one side of it. And of course, that's something we can guarantee throughout our whole value chain, regardless whether it's products or services. We're also looking at products that directly can enable people to live a more sustainable and healthy life at home. And when we say to live a more sustainable life at home, we also mean that it can actually save money in the process of doing the right thing. So today, in many parts of the world, especially looking at the pandemic and the effect the pandemic can have on people's size of the wallets. You have 100 million people who basically move down into the poverty line or below the poverty line. And you can see that discretionary spending has changed. People think twice before they do uh, big capital expenditure, etc. So our products, some of the sustainable solutions, enable people to save more money. It could be saving electricity. It could be saving on water. It could be saving a simple thing as the food that you eat in one night and then you can use it for lunch the next day. Um, or it could be other aspects uh, of providing plant-based protein food. It could be uh, sustainably sourced fish and organic products in the restaurants so it can enable you to live a healthier life. So we have a few products that can illustrate what I just meant. And the important part of this is these products should not cost more. They should be as affordable as our other range. It should not be seen as a luxury and it should help people save money. So one product that we have is, for example, the LED lighting. All our lighting, light fitting, etc., is designed for LED. This helps you reduce the electricity consumption with about 85%. And the lifespan of these uh, lightings are usually around 20,000 hours. So easily you could have them 15 to 20 years. That saves a hell of a lot, not only from an energy point of view and then what it means for the climate impact, it also a great saving for your wallet. We have a product here. This is a product it's called Alkaline Batteries. And we sell a huge amount of them every year, about 300 million across the world. We are removing them. So within one year from now, you will not find them in the stores. They will be completely against and exchanged towards rechargeable batteries. Rechargeable batteries can be used 500 times more than an alkaline battery. That means that you don't only reduce uh, the waste contribution, there is also a big saving for your wallet on that. We talked about food and reducing food waste. We sell a lot of affordable food containers like this Kia 365. Simple thing is that rather than throwing away the food that you ate during the dinner time, 
you save whatever leftover you have and you can then bring it out from the kitchen or uh, from the fridge and then refry it and do a good healthy lunch or bring it back to work and eat and finish off. Just an uh, interesting fact is that food waste is one of the greatest contributors to the greenhouse, greenhouse gases in the world. And 30% of all food that is either produced or purchased is thrown away. So if you can just, with these simple tools, enable people to actually have a more sustainable approach to how to deal with the food, etc., and cook more at home, they can save a lot on the wallet, 30% of the food cost, and they can also save a big impact on the environment. Other products are, for example, this. We call this whole bar. These are uh, recycling uh, tools that easily fit into our kitchen cabinets. So you can put any side in your house. Uh, they look good. Uh, they're easy to keep clean. They're made of uh, recycled materials. And uh, by just starting sorting your waste and then taking PET bottles or metal cans or, or glass, etc., and sell it, resell it to a recyclist, there's quite a fair bit of money that can be saved also inside the store. Um, on the healthy aspects, we also have uh, devised and designed curtains uh, that are able to clean the air inside the house. Uh, what most people don't know, and especially in these cities in, in, in Southeast Asia and Asia, the pollution is an issue, whether it's uh, uh, talking about pollution that has been imported from nearby countries because of slash and burn uh, farm practices, or just because of the fact that uh, the, uh, the weather pressure and the, the ut utilization of cars and the car use contributes to an increased level of unhealthy uh, particles in the breathing air. With these curtains and the indoor air, you can actually reduce those particles and take away uh, both the smell and other uh, damaging particles in there. And there is no electricity covered. You just hang the curtains, they look good, they are affordable, and they are made of recycled PET bottles. So another way of enabling the customers to have a more healthy and sustainable life could be to extend the lifetime of the products. We'll do that by providing repair solutions for products that may break in your home or that after five or 10 years of use need some fixing up to do. That's one side of doing it and we should provide those solutions for the customers. Another one is to enabling the customers to sell on the products, either back to us, and we sell them to new customers, or for them to have a platform where they can sell their care products to other customers on the second-hand platform. That's one way of contributing to the circularity and as we have a, a global ambition, also linked with the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals by 2030, that we would be completely in our whole product range, fully circular by 2030. And one aspect around circularity will not only then have the take back, but also providing maybe a platform inside the store where people can sell uh, their secondhand products to us or to other customers in the future. So IKEA and uh, companies like yourself, uh, we are both involved in real estate and also uh, consumers and we are linked in many ways in the sense that we're dealing with people's life at home and homes as such. So companies like us, we have a lot of things we can do to actually enable our business to be a contributor to uh, moving towards a more circular world, uh, a climate positive world, etc. And I think when it comes to real estate, uh, which are normally very large footprints. It could be mega city here with the mega Bagna shopping center and each of the Kia blue boxes. Uh, and what uh, um, it could be condominiums or real estate company as such. How we build our buildings and how we prepare them to be operated can have a significant impact on reducing the climate impact and the energy costs and, and enable cost savings and increase profitability in the buildings. There, I think, is, is one of the simplest ways to see how we can, as, as companies, can really make a positive difference uh, going forward. And what's important is always to center it in the core of our business competence. So distribute the ownership throughout the organization. Let the persons that are working with facilities or let the persons working with marketing and let the persons that are working with sales or with HR take an ownership of their parts of the sustainability aspects and drive it close to the business where the decisions are being made but encourage it always to take center part of the business in itself and to make it part of the business and ensuring then that it also drives growth 
drives profitability, drives efficiencies, because that's how we can do the biggest difference together. It's been an honor to be here today and to share the various dimensions around an integrated sustainability. A few things to remember after this session is one, sustainability should be affordable. It should be accessible. Sustainability is nothing you achieve on your own. You do it together with others. So we need to partner up here and work towards common goals. But I want you to also take with you from this that sustainability can be an engine of growth, engine of profitability, compatibility. It's also something that's going to matter going forward for your long-term survival of your business. So thank you very much. Thank you, Property Guru Asia. It's been a pleasure to be here with you today. Goodbye.